All right, well, I will try to be brief. I know I'm the last speaker, and it's probably a long day for you guys. So, um, you know, my name is Dr. Carlton Reeves. Uh, I'm a, and if you can't hear me, just yell at me. Uh, um, I'm a Ford Deployed Solution Leader at C3 IoT. I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our company. I think we're new. I don't know if everybody here knows who we are or what it is that we do. Uh, most people think we are a hardware company. That is not true. We are a software uh, products company. Um, I want to give you a little bit of an overview and talk to you about some use cases. And really, I wanted to talk about this idea of digital transformation. And I kind of uh, at using AI at enterprise scale, essentially. Um, and I want to build off a little bit of the topics here. Um, I want to kind of make this interactive. So feel free to just, you know, if you, as I go through this kind of quickly, throw any questions or stop me. Um, I'll, I'll stay pretty high level just so we can get through this in time. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, let me just jump right into this. Uh, turn this on. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, so C3 IoT, we're a software platform uh, for the digital enterprise uh, transformation. And we really look at this uh, considering around kind of four vectors that are influencing how organizations are really thinking about how they're going to build, the design, develop, and deploy AI IoT applications. And so these four vectors that we believe are kind of a confluence of the digital transformation are uh, elastic cloud compute, um, big data, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and then natural language processing or social human computer interaction. And we believe those are actually influencing what we see as uh, the Internet of Things. And when we think about the Internet of Things, <clears throat> we think about, just think about how many sensors are being deployed, right? We're rapidly, this is rapidly growing. And if you think about Metcalfe's law, right, the power of the network is n squared, you can think about how this is influencing all these interconnected devices. What's even more astonishing is that all of these devices are essentially computers, right? All your cell phones, all these smart sensors, all these things that can do uh, edge compute. There are a lot of really sophisticated power on these, in, on these individual devices. And at C3, we look at this as the beginning of the digital transformation, right? And so that's really where we look at those individual vectors. And so some of the technologies that are kind of driving this are big data, Internet of Things, multi-cloud, cloud computing, natural language processing, artificial intelligence. Um, these are just some of the major themes. And if you want to get into it, when you think about this, what are some of the major use cases around this, right? So you've got, you know, inventory optimization demand forecasting, predictive maintenance is a pretty significant application. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, with the U.S. Air Force app, uh, deployment that we have going on. Um, and, and a few other uh, use cases such as yield optimization, write up, route optimization. And when you think about what are the industries that are leveraging this and, and the industries that are taking advantage of the digital transformation, these are all of them. Right? It's, it's literally everything. It's financial services. It's retail. It's oil and gas, it's government, it's aerospace and defense, it's transportation. Um, and so, you know, as I kind of come back for a moment, I want to just kind of, as I start to introduce you into, uh, and give you some context about C3 for just a moment, and then I'll jump right into these use cases, I really want to kind of think of, you know, have you think about this from an, a, a different paradigm. So it's, it's one thing where a lot of folks think about, you know, they look at this as if you want to deploy an AI IoT application, you kind of start from the bottom of the stack and work your way up. And you think about how can I use, how can I leverage open source uh, software, right? And, it, and, it, and when you think about that, there's orders, of, there's orders of complexity associated with that, right? You've got to stitch together you know, 30, 40 individual systems that have varying levels of professionalism uh, and, and integration, and then you want to kind of stitch that together, make it work for a, for a particular application, but what about if there's process changes, right? What if the use case changes? What if it evolves? I mean, that's orders of magnitude in terms of complexity. At C3, what we did is, uh, at, C, at C3, what we did is we, we basically took, uh, cool, at, at C3 what we did is we looked at this from a different perspective. We, we started with the application layer and we said if we want to deploy predictive analytics at the application level, what do we need to do to build a platform, an end-to-end -end platform in order to do this? And so that's really what we did and I'll, and I'll talk briefly about that before we begin. Um, so C3 IoT, we're one of the, we're, we're really, a, we're trying to become, and we believe we currently are, a world leader and provider of big data, AI, and IoT applications. Um, and what is it that we do, right, for those of us who aren't uh, familiar with us? Uh, we're a platform as a service um, that allows data integration, 
um, and allows you to, to develop applications as well as operate those applications on a massively scalable uh, processing platform. Um, and we're, we're, we've been around for about nine years, and so we've, we've kind of been around a block. We've got some significant customers, and so we like to say we're you know, a low-risk, tried, tested, and proven platform. Um, and as I said, nine years, some ventures, some, some funding from our CEO, um, and then we've got about a million lines of Java code to develop this proprietary, uh, this proprietary platform um, that is, again, open and extensible, but allows you to also leverage any and all uh, open source solutions. So this is, this is a little bit about the C3LT platform. This is our eye chart. So if you can read everything from there, congratulations, you've got perfect vision. Um, so this is a little bit about, this is kind of what the platform is from a holistic perspective. I won't dive into this today. We could spend literally an hour just me talking about this, but I will say there's just a couple, a couple interesting things. Um, <clears throat> and this is actually our platform with our, our greatest and newest partner, uh, Microsoft. Um, and here we're really looking at, on one side you'll see all the data sources that we ingest. Uh, you'll see our C3 data integrator. And then we've got kind of four major components in the, in the middle there. Uh, our platform services, our data visualization, our continuous data processing, um, <clears throat> and then kind of our artificial intelligence uh, on top of that. And then on the end, we have kind of custom applications as well as our own white label applications, like predictive maintenance or something like that. Um, so, func so functionally, what, it, what, is that, what is all of that mess that I kind of just showed, what does it do? Right? That's really kind of the question. All of that does a couple different things. One, it, again, it's a data integration platform. Two, it's a data processing platform. And most importantly, it's an analytics platform with three really, where we try to drive three types of analytics. Descriptive analytics, what's happened? Predictive analytics, what's going to happen? And prescriptive analytics, what do I do next? Right, so if I know that my asset is going to fail, and I've trained an AI classifier on top of that, what do I do, how do I prevent that from happening? What do I do now that I know that it's going to fail in a given period of time and how do we recover from that? And how do we learn from that and build intelligence into our business processes such that we can do better and gain, it, gain value? And this is that closed loop machine to machine control. So there's some interesting thought processes here. And, and, and all of that kind of comes back to my central point here, digital enterprise transformation. Thinking about problems differently and thinking about how you're gonna incorporate these problems into your business processes, right? And so how do you do that? How do you expand across that? <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> and so the C3 IoT platform, we kind of, we, we did this, when we go back to the platform and I talk about how we built it from the application layer down, we did this with something really unique, uh, a model-driven architecture, uh, where we, we, we did this with a model-driven architecture where everything within a platform is actually referenced uh, and, and, and characterized with an, as an object or a type. Think of like Java classes. Um, and, and so that allows you to kind of have plug and play and maintain the referential integrity of your data model as you, as you manipulate these objects at a metadata level, abstracted from the underlying architecture. So this is something that's really, really interesting. Um, and this kind of shows that, uh, that model-driven architecture in all the different mod types. So each one of these little bubbles on the bottom is actually represented as a type. But what's unique about this and what kind of drives uh, the rapid value that customers get and why you're starting to see uh, see, see how we're trying to democratize artificial intelligence is because of the fact that as your processes change and as different services are supported, you can actually swap different types or objects in and out. Um, and so that's kind of one, that's one great aspect. But it also means that you no longer have to wrangle data because you're operating on a metadata level, um, so data about data. Uh, and everybody in your organization can actually develop and deploy their AI, IoT applications at this metadata level. So there's some level of sophistication there that allows you to extrapolate value just by doing that. Uh, and so again, at C3, um, you know, we're, we're really trying to drive uh, digital transformation for uh, leveraging big data, predictive analytics, IoT, and we're trying to demonstrate value in a new way, trying to demonstrate value in weeks versus year and increase productivity in, by orders of magnitude compared to traditional means. So when, when we heard our first speaker talk about, hey, you need to you know, drive innovation, that's really what we're trying to do. You need to think differently if you're gonna to start to kind of let, take advantage of all these new vectors that are kind of, kind of driving uh, the Internet of Things. So <clears throat> I was kind of towed by our team to, to throw up some of, our, some of our customers, and so I'm just gonna mention a few that, I'm gonna, that we will highlight today. 
Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, 3M, a uh, company that hopefully some of you use with their sticky notes and whatever. Um, Caterpillar, uh, a big manufacturing company, um, as well as the US Air Force. So I'll highlight just a couple use cases with these guys. Um, so the first one, Caterpillar. This is, a, this is actually a really interesting example, and I'll stay fairly high level here, um, as well as with the next use case. But what's really unique here is that they've decided to standardize on our platform as their leaders from the, as their team, as their leadership team really thought about, we want to drive a digital transformation within our organization. And we want to look holistically across our entire supply chain and think about what are the various applications that we can build that can take advantage of, to take, to take advantage of all these disparate data sources, bring them together into a unified federated data image, and then build out analytics on top of that to drive business value. And so if that means changing internal processes, we're going to have to do that. And so that's something that this organization, as well as the next organization, are kind of thinking about. Um, so we all kind of know who they are, a little bit of facts about them, uh, 45 billion in revenue, 3 million products worldwide. But what's really, really interesting in this case is this is a, and so in this particular instance, this is a 24 month project um, where we are ingesting roughly 23 petabytes of data from 5,000 uh, enterprise, where they're migrating, I should say, 5,000 enterprise applications. So when I said, you know, this is where they as an organization are thinking about driving digital transformation, this is a, an assortment of business uh, groups within the company think, coming to us and, and working with us over the course of months thinking, how do we leverage AI and IoT? And what is the best way? And obviously some of these had to populate to the top because you had to you know, prioritize, but this is really where the direction is, where we're getting buy-in at the CEO level or the CXO level to drive innovation and change the culture of a lot of these large enterprises. And I think that's something that we're seeing not just in uh, the public, not just in the private sector, but also in the public sector within government as well. Um, and so this is really where you start to look, when you start to look across their value chain, you can really start to see uh, where they're kind of targeting. So some of the first applications uh, are, you know, demand forecasting and, sto and stocking and uh, manufacturing predictive, min predictive maintenance, uh, as well as inventory optimization and supply network optimization. And I'll talk a little bit about how predictive maintenance, inventory optimization, and supply network optimization go together, uh, again, when I get to another use case. But I think it, it, those are really, really interesting because those are some of the marquee applications you're starting to see come across as you're able to drive value for various, for various organizations. Um, uh, 3M, again, this is something I'll kind of I'll move uh, briskly through again. Another use case that you have a customer that wants to standardize uh, their entire organization on one platform where they can ingest their data into a unified federated data image and then build out individual applications across their, across their organization. Um, in this particular use case, you have uh, they're trying again look at inventory optimization, supply chain uh, inventory analysis, as well as source pricing optimization. Um, a little bit of facts about uh, uh, about 3M, uh, but then again, look, this is them kind of coming back and looking at across their value chain. What are the different applications that we can develop, uh, leveraging AI and IoT and big data? Um, again, and so you know, sales and operation planning, as well as inventory and supply optimization, are some of the big ones. But what you'll notice here in, in, in some of these projects. I mentioned driving value quickly. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, they wanted to develop, uh, uh, or uh, develop a way to, de to accelerate how they're gonna deliver services and products um, and enhance customer onboarding and optimize th their resources. And so this is a six month project. The business value for that particular thing is, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar op uh, operation. But what you're noticing with the value they're gaining from using AI is that they're able to have 10x improvements in terms of their internal processes, reducing time uh, for data processing, reducing time for revenue recognition, as well as reaching a lot of their new targets. So, um, and this is a 90% target reduction in customer onboarding time. So there's a lot of value, again, that AI kind of brings to the table. I'll skip over a couple other things because I want to kind of jump to um, our kind of one, one application that I think we're really, really excited about at C3, uh, particularly in the context of uh, our break into the federal government and as, as well as our, our expansion. So this is really uh, around predictive maintenance. Uh, and, and this application is actually a really unique one because it was only 12 weeks. Um, so th in three months, we were able to ingest data uh, for the US Air Force E3 Century AWACS aircraft. Um, so think of a, a Boeing 747 with a giant radar system flying on top of it. 
Um, and we were able to aggregate all this data, again, into a unified image, process it on our platform, turn it into types, and we were able to process a lot of this unstructured data. So this is an older aircraft. Um, but what's, what's unique here is that we were able to process a lot of the unstructured data using natural language processing to extract insights to develop uh, features that then, went, that then moved into AI classifiers. And so within this 12 weeks, we were able to increase, improve unscheduled maintenance by 28% and increase aircraft availability by roughly 30%, where their target goal was 25%. Now, when you think of an organization the size of the Air Force, you can think of, wow, if I can increase my availability of an aircraft by 30%, that's pretty significant, particularly when half these aircraft actually don't really fly because of issues with part, uh, invent part inventory. Um, and that's actually a segue to some of the next things that you're going to see. So what, you're starting to, what they're starting to observe is that by leveraging AI and leveraging also third-party data such as weather, they're starting to not only be able to increase their aircraft availability, but they're also able to identify two other things that were kind of artifacts within the data. Um, one is that you're starting to be able to identify uh, individuals that need to be retrained. Why? Because individuals write their maintenance logs in the, in the system, right? And so what happens is the AI classifier starts to pick out patterns within these particular individuals and correlate that to how, their, how the aircrafts that they work on perform. And so now you're able to, now as a side effect, identify individuals that, hey, you need to be retrained because we notice that Johnny over there, every time he works on an aircraft, the thing goes down three months later or two weeks later. So that's a really interesting thing. You're also able to uh, find the inverse, right? Individuals that, can actually, that are actually doing a really good job. So again, these are side effects to what you get with the power of artificial intelligence. The other thing is, you're also able to, we were also able to, for the first time, um, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, improve and demonstrate uh, uh, to these individuals that maintenance shouldn't be standardized across the globe. So think about how pervasive our, our, our Department of Defense is. It's pretty much on every, on every part of the world. But if you have a base in a desert on the other side of the planet, and you have a base in, let's say, the South Pacific, right, why would you maintain that aircraft the same, right? I mean, the sand and the, and the dry debris and the heat and everything can affect components dramatically different than a hot, humid environment that's corrosive down in the South Pacific. And what we were able to show is like, hey, in this area, you're maintaining these aircraft the same way. You have the same, you have the same regulations, but now you're starting to see failure rates dramatically different. Right now, to some of us in the room, that might seem obvious, but when you don't share that information across your organization, you don't get that insight. So when you, when you work with an organization and you work from the top down and you can, in, you can ingest all this disparate data, process it using AI, you can start to draw new insights, particularly when you can bring in third-party data and all we did was weather. I mean, it's not like this was super sophisticated. The AI classifiers are a little bit sophisticated, but bringing in that data has just added a level of insight. And now you have evidence-based policy that can go into play to say, hey, look, we need to do something different when you're in this place and when you're in this geographical region versus this one. And those are things that are currently happening. So I think this just drives my point that I think artificial intelligence um, drives a lot of new, has a lot of new opportunities because some of the things you may think you're trying to solve for can, can also bring about um, secondary and tertiary side effects that are generally mutually beneficial. Um, this, this is actually just a, uh, let me go back a slide. This was actually just a slide about um, <clears throat> uh, just the time scale at which we try to do this. So I mentioned that we try to show value in weeks. These, again, this was only a 12-week project, uh, and you can see, you know, in the, first, in the first three months, we were already showing, we were already optimizing predictive maintenance and getting that 30% return just using uh, unstructured data from pilot reports. Imagine what would happen if you put this in an F-35 where you have all the data in the world, right? I mean, this is, this is where we're kind of going with this type of thing. And this is kind of the op where, where I see as the next steps. Uh, but to get back to a point that I said later, and I'll, and I'll conclude after this, what's, what's really interesting is that if you start to, as you start to think about how AI can change an organization, there's the executive level where you're kind of planning it out, and I showed you those, those examples with Caterpillar and 3M where you see the value chain in there, literally had all the different business groups there. But in an organization like this where, again, not everybody's communicating with each other, what's, there's also a second side effect where once you start to solve for predictive maintenance and identify system and subsystem components that are going to fail in some, t in some given period, um, the next question is, 
do you have that component? Can you actually fix that aircraft before it fails? Like, do you have the battery that's about to fail in the next 200 hours? And so that leads you to a logical next step of inventory optimization, right? And so then what's the next step? How do I get that battery from, I don't know, Washington, D.C. over to this Air Force base on the other side of the planet? And so now you th have to start to think about supply chain and supply optimization. So you get these logical next steps, and if you do this enough, right, and if you show this using this evidence-based approach from the success of these projects, I mean, the success of many of the projects, you can start to build and snowball this. And so what we're starting to see is that we're doing this right now. Uh, and so we're, this is kind of an example of, uh, uh, you know, us trying to optimize for supply, logistics, and maintenance um, across, uh, across, across the U.S. Air Force. Um, so I had a, a sneak one more uh, example in here, but I'm just going to end it here and, and just jump past all of this, which you can talk to me after. So this is, I was going to get pretty deep into some AI classifiers and try to excite you a little bit about n-dimensional hyperplanes, but I think that's another story. So uh, as I conclude, um, you know, C3IoT, we're, 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 we're a nine-year-old company um, founded by Tom Siebel. You can Google him. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, he's very involved in our company. But um, we're, we, you know, we're here in the D.C. area. We're trying to kind of get our name going. Um, and uh, I would just want to say thank you guys for your time. And, and as I conclude and skip past our board of directors, um, you know, we want to focus on, you know, again, we're focusing on digital enterprise transformation and really driving big data um, utilizing predictive analytics and assist in helping drive digital innovation through IoT and, ex and demonstrating value in weeks, not years, and increasing productivity um, by several orders of magnitude. Um, so with that, uh, thank you for, very much for your time, and um, I don't know, I guess I'm giving it back to you guys. <laughs>